Wolfgang, Juan Claus, old friend of uh, the urban age, and as we heard before from Wolfgang, one of the people who effectively kick-started the whole project and is now the head of UN Habitat. We'd like you to just introduce this session and then share the discussion. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the invitation again uh, to this, to have the opportunity to talk with you the, of these interesting uh, questions. Uh, well, we are, we are uh, focusing this uh, discussion on understanding urban health. Um, and I, we will have the privilege to have uh, three very well-reputed professionals who knows quite a lot about that. Victor uh, Rodwin, Katerin Kiobutungi, and Jason Corbun. And I think that uh, of the three um, approaches, we will see also different uh, geographical perspective of health and urbanization, uh, especially uh, the difference between the developed world realities and the developing world realities. Uh, we tend to, we are very, very, um, uh, you know, we, we should, probably we are very confident in ourselves when we try to analyze cities, which are very uh, different, urban realities which are very different. In the presentation of the, the conference, we see that we are talking about cities which go from $60,000 per capita year to cities that uh, we go to less than $900 a year or $500 a year. And to try to understand everything together or to try to uh, draw uh, common solutions to, to that is quite difficult. Uh, but still, let's try what, what it comes out. Huh? Uh, mm, it's interesting. I am also uh, uh, a medical uh, uh, trained person and a mayor. Uh, and, and it seems that uh, there's a, a kind of correlation perhaps between health and, and, and urbanism uh, as our biographies explain. And is th this is not, this is not uh, surprising in the sense that, in fact, when you look at the history of urbanism, the, one of the biggest steps uh, forward in, in, in urbanism was done in the mid 18th, 19th century with the hyenistic uh, movement. When, uh, when- uh, I showed quite a lot of pictures. About that, uh, okay, then we, I, don't not to, I don't need to repeat that. Uh, no. There's a strong, uh, yeah, the, the one of the forces, one of the forces who draw the political interest together in order to do city changes at that moment was uh, the perception that it was immoral to accept the health differences that they were seen at that time in the city. You remember the optimists? Uh, you talk about that also? No. Ah, okay. You know that the optimist were the ones which, uh, the, the origin of the word optimist is contrary that the nowadays uh, meaning of optimist, in fact. The origin of optimist, like Malthus, was the one who considered that the uh, social equilibrium at the moment was the optimal social equilibrium that society could get. It was not better, it was not a, possi a better possible uh, society other than the workers being very poor, the riches being very rich, in order to have a very competitive uh, industry because the cost of the labor was very cheap. And this was considered the optimal functioning of the economical society. And against that, urbanism sublevated and said, no, there's another alternative. There's an alternative that this is not the optimal equilibrium. There's another optimum equilibrium and it's that the uh, workers uh, get a little bit better off and they will uh, spend a little bit more money, they will have a little bit, uh, little bit more uh, of uh, you know, knowledge and capacities, they will increase, improving their conditions, the productivity of our economic uh, society and then everything even would be a little bit better. Then it was justified to invest in cleaning the water and improving the urban 
characteristics of our society. Until that was accepted by society, it took a lot of fights. Uh, and there's very interesting debates, by the way, in the British Parliament, saying that no, we shouldn't improve the water distribution of the water of the of the of the cities, because this is the natural thing. This is how things have been always, and there there's no need, and it's not good to improve the conditions of uh, water distribution in London uh, uh, until, of course. It was not by, um, by uh, let's say, uh, uh, just cognitive uh, awareness. It was by political fight, by uh, you know, which the change was produced. And then, of course, the new urban uh, layout of the cities, mainly with water distribution and clean water uh, 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 distribution, tap water, uh, clean tap water distribution to household was uh, acquired. Uh, and it was very interesting from the medical point of view that that was uh, done before Pasteur. That means that that was done before the microbiology uh, theory of illnesses. Uh, cholera, which was the origin of everything, the Biberion choleric, it was not really fully described and understood as a cause of cholera until 30 years after it was applied, the, all those urban policies, urbanistic policies were applied. That means that uh, we have here a very clear uh, 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 point where the politicians, fortunately, or the political system, the fight between powers in order to provide a new consensus, was in front of uh, medical knowledge. The social conditions of health were not described as that, but politically understood and uh, move and justified the change of approach to urbanism in the mid-century. But now I think the important thing is that we go to our speakers and I would like to, to first to invite uh, Victor uh, Rodwin for, uh, from uh, New York, New York. Uh, in order to explain, uh, okay, your ideas.